Oh. Flashback. Is this Chuck? Jesus. Chuck and Jimmy. I'm telling you, it can't. Mm. That's the guy from the flashback before that Jimmy was mates with, right? Suit guy. What? Screw this. Hmm. Hey guys, wanna buy a Rolex? Amazing. How much for that cheap piece of? Look. Oh, <laughs> no, it got me. It got, oh, come, get out of it. Get out of here. That's dirty. That's dirty, mate. Hot line and sinker, dude. I'm so mad and yet so amused. My brother's outside in a taxi. I came here to say goodbye. I'm moving to Albuquerque. Okay. What are you going to do there? I'm going to work at his law firm, like in the mail room, to start anyways. Mm, that's an interesting line, to start anyways. Do you know what I mean? Like to Jimmy's mind, that was always the start of something. To Chuck's mind, that was the like start, middle, finish. It was like, you go here, you stay here. But you see, as early as this, there's this misunderstanding between them. Out of jail, now you want to go back? It was working for him, that's all that is. Mm, really? Does this guy, does this guy see Chuck for what he is already? I mean, he knows Chuck, right? I mean, Jimmy mentioned him in the taxi outside and this guy's like, Chuck's here. He knows Chuck. Interesting. And he's like, yeah, that'd be a prison, mate. This guy calling it years before it happened. He's me! It's time to make some changes. Hey, listen to me. You're slipping, Jimmy. Mm. What do you gotta change, huh? Everything. Ah, uh, interesting, isn't it? This this origin of the person that we know, right? The origin of Saul, the origin of Jimmy in the show at present. This guy being like, you're slipping Jimmy. It's Chuck in this situation, but you know, obviously not as unhealthy or toxic, right? You're slipping Jimmy. What do you gotta change, huh? What do you gotta Everything. change? Everything. Time, time to, to grow, grow up. up. Yeah. yeah. And I, I wonder how how maybe uh, Jimmy's gonna slip. <laughs> More so towards an opinion of, nah, maybe I don't have to change everything. Because obviously we know where he goes. And from the trajectory that I'm seeing, at least from last episode, perhaps Jimmy, you know, Jimmy was on kind of this path to try and reach the heights of the straight and narrow lawyer, right? We know he doesn't get there. And perhaps that is the start of him going onto this path that is more so familiar to us as the audience, having watched Breaking Bad. And it's like, yeah, he's got to change everything. And now I feel like because of last episode's events, that mindset of Jimmy's, I feel like, is going to start to change. You want to spend the rest of your life on that stool? I mean, come on, Marco, look at yourself. Right, okay. Episode called Marco, got it. Jeez, his master's voice. Mm. Marco, oh, come on. Polo, sorry. Uh, that is going to be a theme of the episode, I'm so sorry. He got you out of jail, okay? But he's your brother. What else is he going to do? Mm. Well, that is the question, mate, isn't it? It's like watching Miles Davis give up the trumpet. Right, because he's good at this. It's just a waste, is all I'm saying. Right. I, and I guess that, that comes into effect of like what Chuck was getting at last episode, right? And it, I'm not going to get too bogged down in this argument right now, because obviously it's a, it's a question that can never get answered of if Chuck didn't think the way he did, if he hadn't been holding Jimmy back the way he has, is it self-fulfilling prophecy? I saw a lot of you talking about it in the comments last episode. And yeah, that's the conversation, right? And um, we'll never know. We'll never know. I, I do think, I do err on the side of like Chuck, Chuck was holding him down to the extent prejudging him to the extent that jimmy didn't have a chance right i don't think he ever had a chance this opportunity that jimmy's talking about uh, yeah sure it's an opportunity for the mailroom right no higher even though we we see here even that jimmy has his sights set higher and i think this conversation actually puts into perspective a little bit because i think this shows you that actually it's why i'm erring on that, that side because it shows you that he wants this you know he wants to turn over a new leaf marco's like what, what do you want to change and he's like everything right here this is ground zero you know this is is ground zero for Jimmy going forward. You know, he's making the foundation going forward. He thinks it's the foundation to rise high, 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 at least from Chuck's perspective. He's going to keep him down in the mailroom. And so, yeah, for me, I err on the side because I'm seeing aspects of Jimmy here that show that he does actually want to turn over a new leaf. He wants to change everything. He wants to put this life aside. And he just wasn't given the opportunity because of Chuck. And so it's like, yeah, was was Jimmy always gonna go there? Was he always gonna bend the law? Was he always gonna do the, the billboard stuff, the, the the two twin stuff that led him to Tuco? Was he always gonna do that? Or has that been elements of Chuck? Because like, let's not forget as well, if we're gonna speculate, if we're gonna rely completely on conjecture, then you've also got to swing the other way, right? You know, if you're gonna say, well, ah, self-fulfilling, sure, but ah, Jimmy was always gonna go there. That way it's like well what we've actually seen in the show everything we've seen in the show probably wouldn't exist if chuck had let him in the firm in that flashback all that time ago years ago stuff we're seeing that we're using against him now as the audience right you know it's like ah, oh, yeah but we've seen in the show he's not changed you know he's bit of both he's you know he's light and dark he's striving for light but he's still dark and he's still slipping jimmy at heart and it's like yeah because chuck didn't let him be anything else 
because we saw from the flashback that he didn't allow him to come into the firm. If he'd have been allowed to come into the firm, then that would have probably given him a good chance of preventing everything we've seen in the show so far, which would, which would which would have taken all that away, all of the bad stuff away. Would he have done bad stuff? We don't know. Do you know what we don't know? Honestly, at least from what I've seen so far, I think there's more evidence in the show to say that he would have been straight and narrow. In this world of conjecture, I think there's much more evidence to show that Jimmy would have been on the straight and narrow and he could have done it if only for Chuck's support. And that is the key ingredient that's been lacking that has meant that he's split and having to reach into his past life to survive in his present life because he's not got the support that he should have, could have, from Chuck. Hello and welcome to Better Call Saul Sunday. That's right, the show that happens every single Sunday until we are finished with it, mate. Today, Marco, the finale of season one. Let's get into it. If you call, he shall come. Oh, hello. Hello. We're in Hamlin, Hamlin, McGill already. Have a talk, man. Have a talk with Howard, please. Okay, that's not Howard. Kim, get him in. Given the case to HHM. And have a little bit of a chat, though, as well. The fact that Chuck doesn't want me here, why didn't you just tell me? Okay, he's chill. Okay, good. I didn't want you hating your own brother. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that's got to be the motivation, right? I wonder if that's the same with Howard. Did Kim tell you? I figured it out on my own. About time, right? He's a clever guy, please see that. Brought the sandpiper stuff with me, it's down in my car. I mean, I think from Howard's perspective, it's probably a case of he respects Chuck, he likes Chuck, and he doesn't want to, you know, absolutely stampede over his relationship with his brother. I get it, he doesn't really know Jimmy, he doesn't have that connection, right? I think that's where it's coming from, from Howard's point of view, at least for now, I don't know, we'll see. It's really bad timing for Kim, though, not being funny, because he just told Kim and now, now Jimmy knows. <laughs> if any of those geezers don't want to sign with you, just give me their names i'll talk them into it hmm. you know jimmy i never wanted okay. to go this way sweet finally if it had been up to me we would have at least howard i get it giving you a chance right your brother's very important to the firm right sorry i called you a pig <laughs> it's kind of funny though we owe you some money don't we? or bump it up a little bit mate i've got something for you too uh, it's a shopping list for chuck right it's pretty straightforward the ice is a pain in the I usually sneak into a motel and fill a garbage bag. Mm. The most important thing is the newspapers. Uh, the New York Times. Wow. And now Howard's seeing how much Jimmy actually did for his brother. And I wonder if he's going to be putting it together in his head. And it's going to be such a stark contrast of like, look what Jimmy did for him. When all Chuck was doing was holding Jimmy back. This is a test for Howard's character. I'm very curious to see where he goes with this. There's a newsstand on Eubank that has both of them at 6 a.m. 6 a.m. The Albuquerque Journal, he gets delivered, but somebody still has. Yeah, yeah, look at that look. He's like, dude, this is so much. Yeah, exactly. For the first time seeing, like, look at everything Jimmy's doing. And on top of that, he's like solo running his law firm. And he has to get that going on his own with very little money, you know, going to the court and basically representing people for $700 a pop. Do you know what I mean? Like for the first time, perhaps, how is actually going to see how much effort and time and like Kim coming in last episode and being like, he's a hard worker, he's a good lawyer. Maybe Howard's going to finally see it for the first time. And it's funny that Jimmy frames it as like, oh, it's, it's not a big deal. It's not a lot. Don't worry. And it's, it is though. It's a lot of little stuff, man, that he does consistently all the time. He could have flourished at HHM and at HHM, would he really have had to flounder and struggle as he has on his own that we've seen in the show because the only reason he's dipped into the slipping jimmy skill set has been because he's floundering and struggling because he doesn't have anything to go on he's got no support chuck's got no do you know what i mean this is why i say i err towards the side of like chuck is to blame i i really think that slipping jimmy would have said goodbye when he departed from marco and i and i don't think it's a coincidence that we saw that flashback after last episode when that question gets risen of would jimmy have still turned out that way would he have always return to slipping jimmy would he always retain that would he do you know what i mean and this conjecture of like how culpable is chuck i think ultimately chuck is extremely culpable and like i say i think that flashback that we just saw with marco following last episode and that question being risen demonstrates to me that if only he had had chuck's support he could have done this he could have finally let slipping jimmy go you've been doing all of this every day mm -hmm. for over yeah. a year yeah dude you'll take care of this absolutely this man you could have had mate I always liked you, Jimmy. Did you? Remember? I used to call you Charlie Hustle. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, see, this could be a, the start of a beautiful relationship. <laughs> I want it so bad. God damn it, Chuck, man. It's so interesting how they basically just switcheroos the villain of the series. You come into the show, you think it's gonna be Nacho or Tuco, then you think it's Hamlin. 
and boom, it's Chuck. And not only that, like this feeling that I'm getting right now is everyone's making up, everyone, you know, Jimmy's gone to Howard, Howard's like, I always liked you, man. They're getting on, they finally know the score. He's making up with Kim, he's like, I'm sorry I yelled at you. The only person who is in like negative debt morally and with the people around him is Chuck. He's the bad guy. He's absolutely the bad guy. There's nothing to let out. Chuck's a sick man. Mm-hmm. What else is there to say? Wow, that's mature. It really is, yeah. Not sure how I believe it. I think he might be in a little bit of a shock at the moment. Because it's like, at this point in the show, I really want Jimmy to go forward, take the money that he's going to get from HHM, part ways from Chuck, and thrive. <laughs> I hate that this is a prequel, and I know that's not what happens. Nobody? Okay. All right. <clears throat> you right, mate? Hey! The cinematography is making me anxious. Oh. Oh. B as in the trail. Oh god. Four B's in a row. That's B as in. Oh buddy. Brother. Oh buddy. God damn. If it's another B. Could have a real problem here. <laughs> and... Oh, he's gonna walk out. Another B. Oh my god, seriously. This B thing is really starting to tick me off. <laughs> B as in be calm, Jimmy. B as in believe. Please shout out. Whoop, whoop. I would love to go there. Would you? But, uh, let's face it, that's never gonna happen. Oh God. Oh, he's absolutely going to Belize, isn't he? Is he gonna go to Belize eventually? Because I know he mentions it in Breaking Bad, and he's like, I'm never gonna go there. And he mentions like, oh yeah, take him to Belize, like he's gonna die or something to Walter. Oh my God, is that is that Jimmy's eventual fate? No. Okay, I'm getting too. I'm getting. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. That is true. That's fair. Okay. I mean, Please, don't be a bee. I mean, look out that window. It's. It's like a soulless, radioactive George O'Keefe hellscape out there. He's earned a breakdown. He has. Ironically, also begins with B. A quick question. Who here knows what a Chicago sunroof is? There was this guy named Chet. He might have slept with my wife. Did he actually have a wife? I climbed up top and I may have... Oh, is he going to sh** on the roof? No. Defecated. Uh, yeah, okay. Through the sunroof. I hate that I saw that coming. It's not something you should probably tell all these people, though. Not my finest hour. I'll grant you that. To be fair, though, now I want to know. How big was it? I did not know that his children were in the back seat. No! <laughs> Why are you telling us? I love that you are. I really do. Chet was connected. Oh, God. But he's got the DA saying, indecent exposure. Oh, that's what happened. And that's where it all went off the rails. I've been paying for it ever since. That's why I'm here. Yeah. Yeah, he's lamenting. He's lamenting ever coming with Chuck and the thing that meant that he had to go, which understandable because it did and Marco was right to a certain extent. I mean, Jimmy didn't know it at the time, but he was essentially going to be Chuck's prisoner. Jimmy had these high visions of himself and what he could achieve. And I think he was right of what he could achieve. I mean, he passed the bar, right? Kitty cat notebooks for everybody. Not really a mic drop moment, is it? Ladies and gentlemen, I shit on a roof. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he's back, is he, huh? Are we going to uh, have a reunion with Marco then? I mean, hey, episode's called Marco. Yeah, I'm starting to think. It's so sad, man. I hate it. I do. I hate it because I honestly think, and this is the point, we're at a crossroads here. He's going to get this money and he could use that and keep on the straight and narrow. And this is the thing as well, right? He's never going to do that now. It's weird, isn't it? He's finally set free. He's finally been released from Chuck's chokehold, essentially. I likened it to essentially Chuck having a noose around Jimmy's neck, keeping him nailed to the floor. And that's gone now. He can absolutely do whatever he wants. He's got his goal. He can be a good lawyer. But then the only, I think the only reason he kind of wanted to do that, and especially the only reason that he wanted to, to do it the right way, was because of Chuck. And you goddamn know he's never, he's never going to want to do that again. He's going to want to tear away from his brother as fully and completely as possible. So that's why I say he's at a crossroads. He can go two ways. He can either take this money from HHM and like I was saying last episode, you know, build on his office, build on his name, build on his own, you know, firm and keep going on that straight and narrow and that money's going to really help him. Or, and I think we're seeing it here because I think he's going on the or path, or he's going to relapse back into the slipping Jimmy. And I mean as well, it's not a spoiler, right? Because I know where he ends up with Saul and he's going to go half and half, right? and he's gonna go back or at least bring some of his past into his present and you know be this almost double-sided 
person, this lawyer, but he's gonna start drawing on all of his skills, which eventually turn him into Saul and the Saul we know in Breaking Bad, right? Because he's no longer got Chuck on his case being like, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. And as well, there's motivation to actually pull away from that. I don't think I need to explain why internally Jimmy is gonna be very much like, that guy, I'm gonna get as far away as possible from that man. I think that scene that we just saw in the bingo showed us that, even if we needed to be shown, right? And I think depending on where you wanna come down on this conjecture about like, did Chuck make him into what we know where he goes in the future? Was he the cause of that by holding him back? You know, did, was it a self-fulfilling prophecy? I think what we can say for absolute sure is that his actions to do what he did in holding Jimmy back have propelled him into this life now. And the future that we see as Saul, Chuck propelled him there. We, I think we can kind of say that with more certainty than the conjecture about the past and where, if the past had changed, where he could have gone. And so, yeah, we're at a crossroads and I, I want him to go on the straight and narrow and actually get it in a way that's gonna make him a, a, a top lawyer because he's got that in him. I think we can all, I think we all know he's got that in him, especially now that he's finally free from Chuck and he, and he hasn't got Chuck holding him back. Away from that, he's finally, it's, oh, it's so painful because he's finally got the chance to actually strive forward in a morally pure way, right? And become that lawyer. And he's in the one position now where he can never reach for that in himself because that means that he's gonna become Chuck, right? And that's so painful. And he's never gonna do that now because of what Chuck has done to him and the betrayal. And so it's like, I say he's at a crossroads. I think psychologically, mentally, he's only actually in a place where he can go down one of those paths. Wow, really, after all this time. Make it two. I'll be 5.50. My God, 5.50 for two beers. Sorry, I live in London. That's insane. You get one beer for that if you're lucky. Not been funny. 5.50, that's like four pounds something maybe in pounds. You wouldn't even get a beer for two of those. I said, sorry, I'm so sorry. I got a little distracted. I will be honest with you. I'm a little bit jealous. <laughs> Marco. Polo. Gorgeous hunk of a man. Oh yeah. How long will you keep me waiting? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and hey, it makes sense that he's gonna gravitate towards the one friend that's always had his best interests at heart. I guess in that flashback, Jimmy probably saw Marco as someone who was holding him back, right? Someone who was, uh, someone who he saw the way that he sees Chuck now. And I think, you know, with recent events, he actually sees that, no, if anything, yes, while Marco might have kept him in, in his slipping Jimmy ways, and maybe that's a bad thing, I don't know. At least Marco cared for him. And I think Chuck, and by the way, I think Chuck does in his own way. I just don't think that actually amounts to caring for him. Speaking of pale sons of how's your brother doing? <laughs> you working for him? Sometimes. You should be honest with Marco, dude. Like Michigan Standpipe? What's that? Oh, it sounds like Sandpiper, man. <coughs> right, mate? You okay? <coughs> no, hang on. Oh, he's gonna die. He's gonna die. I'm so sorry. He just, he just coughed. He did. He did. It's absolutely not a sign of this. But like, oh, he's gonna die. I just, I see the pain. Do you know what I mean? Any, anything that I see with the potential to hurt Jimmy. And I'm like, well, it's gonna happen then. Of course it is. Absolutely. How's your mom? Uh, she passed away three years ago. God damn. Yeah, he's really on his own then. Sorry, going back to what I was talking about in that flashback. It, it was very apparent that he had Chuck. He had his mom. Dad's not in the picture, but he called his mom up, was crying. There was clearly a relationship where he felt safe with her. And if she passed away three years ago, Jimmy was alone. All he had was Chuck. That just, that just shows me that he sank into the arms of his brother wholeheartedly and willingly. And he fell so far into that cage that he couldn't possibly have got out on his own until he worked it. Do you know what I mean? It just, it shows the depth, I think, of how, how, how hard that betrayal hit because his mum was gone and he put all his eggs in Chuck's basket and Chuck, unbeknownst to Jimmy, was periodically taking the eggs out, getting rid of them and replacing them with like, I don't know, popcorn. I mean, be fair, that'd be a good thing. I'm not gonna lie, this, I, I lost track of this metaphor, that's true. But you get what I'm saying, right? From Wisconsin, right? Yeah funeral out there no it was here oh and he never got in touch damn you're in town you didn't look me up right and i'm reading from that again again and i'm sorry he didn't he didn't look marco up and i think he would have wanted to but i think that shows at least to me how resolved he was on this path of chuck it's the path of Slipping Jimmy, the path of Chuck, and I think with Slipping Jimmy, we've got Marco as well, right? And I think that just demonstrates how he was all in on Chuck's team. All in on like the straight and narrow. All in on like, yeah, I've got to change everything. And I'm going to stick to that. I'm determined. I am resolved. I need to do this. I need to get out of the mailroom. I need to pass the bar. I need to, you know, 
get hired by HHM. That's when that path started going awry in that flashback when he didn't get into HHM in some degree, in some capacity. And I think in that conversation we saw before with Howard in this episode, he was like, well, there was a line, I can't, remember, I can't remember what it was and Howard didn't finish it. It made me think that Howard would have at least given Jimmy a chance. Even if that wasn't obviously an office or I think Howard would genuinely have been like, stick around, work on it and we'll reassess in six months. I mean, we did see that he said that in the flashback. I think Howard probably meant it. I don't, th I think he knew at the time that that was never going to pan out because Chuck would never have changed his mind. But then maybe Howard was going to be like, oh, I'll try and work on Chuck in the background maybe. Do you know what I mean? I just, I feel like that's where it started to go awry for him. And obviously Jimmy never knew that, right? So anything after that point that Jimmy has kind of done that's, you know, bent the law, and I get it, You've at a certain point, you've got to take responsibility for your own actions. I absolutely believe that. But I do think that it was Chuck's responsibility. I think Chuck's got to take responsibility for his own actions in how that affected Jimmy as well. And again, sorry, I keep repeating it, but absolutely, I think that the way that that started going awry, the way that he started going back to slipping Jimmy, I think Chuck's at least partially, probably more than partially in my, my mind, honestly, to blame for that. And sorry, sorry, I got off track a little bit. I digress, but I think the I think that's direct evidence in the show. Obviously, Marco's going to take that wrong and be like, you know, you didn't want to see me. I think I think Jimmy did. Uh, and I think that just like I say shows how resolved he was on that path. Again, more evidence in the show, I feel, to demonstrate how Jimmy would have been fine if Chuck had only been on his side. How's my cutlass running? It's me around. Jimmy Marco's hurting, man. You gotta you gotta meet him halfway. Hello. All right. Reminder of Chuck. Is he a regular? No. Oh, no, Jimmy, see the man in front of you. Marco's hurting. You've got to broach that gap a little bit. I don't think Jimmy realizes what that did to Marco. Bless him. Like, you've not checked in with him at all. You're buying. I'm selling. Mm, yeah, it makes sense that Jimmy wants to come back here and do this, right? He wants to stick it to the kind of man that Chuck is. We're still 200 plus. I love the framing of this. I didn't say anything. Wow. Take him for everything he's got, man. Smarmy little... Sorry, I'm sorry. I see Chuck in him now. Come on. This guy's playing me, right? Definitely. Yeah. Coin dealer in front of my uncles. I'm gonna call this guy. This is elaborate, dude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. So what do you say? Hey, they've got him. Hey, buddy, I got 75 bucks right here. Amazing. <laughs> Hey, everybody, next round's on us. <laughs> yeah, you see him now becoming the kind of lawyer that is uh, is starting to more solidly embrace the life of the soul that we see in the future. I think what we saw last episode in regard to Chuck was, was a huge motivation for that. Nacho comes back now. Jimmy's, Jimmy's game, I think. And I think that's where we're going to go perhaps maybe next season. Can you keep a secret? Absolutely. Mm. Who's return on your dollars? But I know this customs office. Yeah, it's also interesting. I think with the dynamic between between Marco and Jimmy, I think Jimmy's very much kind of in charge. He's the ringleader. And I think, you know, Chuck essentially took his power away from him. Or at least, you know, made him out to be a chump all that time. And I think I think Jimmy going back and going into this dynamic with Marco, with it being as it is, or at least even if he's not their equals which he didn't have with Chuck. We know that now, he knows that now. And I think everything about this is so sad and it makes absolute sense that he wanted to go back here and, and you know, meet back up with Marco. And I feel like this is almost an initiation, like I say, back to uh, his slipping Jimmy ways and he's maybe gonna bring that back with him to Albuquerque. But yeah, I think there's some a power dynamic going on here too, right? And he's like, I think for, for Jimmy, he's, he's very much going back here and trying to reclaim his power and reclaim a, a modicum of respect for himself. Because I think, you know, as much as we as the audience can look at it and be like, no, 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 Chuck used you. Chuck was very much the bad guy there. You know, you've got nothing to be ashamed of, Jimmy. I can absolutely see why Jimmy would feel belittled and feel the need to reassert respect for himself. As much as like Jimmy could never have seen that coming, there's got to be a, a certain part of Jimmy's mind that's like, I'm, a, I'm such an idiot for never seeing that. I was duped. I was the one who was conned, which I think is the important thing. Like it's always Jimmy that's been doing the conning, right? He is the con man. And I think, you know, Chuck very much, like I say, yes, it's a betrayal. I think <laughs> to a certain extent, extent because of the secrecy involved and Chuck having that go under the radar how he felt for so long and undermining Jimmy it was kind of a con at least I think that's how Jimmy's going to see it and so I think being a, a con man himself or at least bit coming from this world I think internally he's going to lose a lot of respect for himself and I think he's reasserting that and I think he's going to come back to Albuquerque and and come back a changed man that guy looks so much like Walter White holy shit. oh hello you are not Kevin Costner <laughs> 
I was last night. <laughs> I mean, I can kind of believe it though. Like he looks very similar. Can I interest you ladies in some mimosas? Oh, I tell you what, I would, be, I would stick around, mate. I'm not being funny. This looks like quite a nice place. It's so spacious, dude. I do also, by the way, want to talk about the law question. And I will explain that, hopefully, if I remember <laughs> later on. But this sanctity of the law that Chuck brought up last episode. Messages. This oh, wow. Uh, yes, Mr. <laughs> yeah, Marco's coughing again. I don't like that at all. He's going to die, isn't he? A week's going to have to do it. I got to go home. Wow, a week, dude. Very cold and sick. Oh, oh, this is, do you know what? There is a certain element of this that is that's not very nice in regard to Marco. And I think Jimmy is manipulating him a little bit. I think this is a little bit of a mark on, you know, Jimmy's character. <sighs> Look, he's he's very down in the dumps. He's, he's very much suffering, right? So I can kind of give him a pass. He's not necessarily thinking empathetically towards Marco. But we saw Marco, we come in, we see Marco. He's working for the standpipe thing. He's very much put J Slipping Jimmy and that life, I feel, aside and moved forward and moved on. And we're seeing here, that it didn't take, you know, Jimmy offered this and he was straight there. Again, I don't think it was necessarily by choice, I think, you know, but with the absence of Jimmy, he didn't have, it was a two-man job. He couldn't continue doing that, right? That's what, the, the impression I'm getting. I do feel like Jimmy coming in and almost using Marco for his own betterment, for his own, I guess, rehabilitation from this very traumatic event in his own life, right? Absolutely. He's kind of using Marco and pulling Marco back into it in a way that gives like Marco this taste of like, this is what it could be like. Ah, only for a little bit though, Bye. There is something a little bit cruel in that. Because I do, I feel sorry for Marco here. I'm a lawyer. What? Oh, he doesn't. Oh, of course. Why would he know that? So you're ripping off old people. No. Mm -mm. Holy crap. Slipping Jimmy's a lawyer? <laughs> and look at that. Look at that contrasted against Chuck last episode. From Chuck, those words feel so different. A chimp with a machine gun, right? Slipping Jimmy with a law degree. And Marco's like, Slipping Jimmy is a lawyer? <laughs> that's so great. And the contrast between those two, that's what he should have got. Do you want to go back? I mean, you got to be king of the desert. Look at right this. Around town. All due respect, you're a lawyer and you're not making bank. You're doing it wrong. Well, you're going to build something, build it out here. I mean, lawyers in Chicago make Marco at Chuck's uh, in Albuquerque. Chuck's a stuck-up douchebag. I hate to break it to you, but he doesn't even like you. Oh. He's my brother. Mm, I wonder how much of that. Because, yeah, I'm like, I'm, he's right. Why not come out to Chicago? Get away from it you know, and start afresh and build out somewhere else. But now I'm thinking, and I'm going back to my other theory of like, he's got something to prove now. You know, he's got something to prove to Chuck. He's got to prove to not only Chuck, but himself to a certain extent, he can make it. And he can be the thing that Chuck doesn't think he can be. And I think that's what's going to keep him in Albuquerque. The hot streak we're on, I bet we break a grand easy. I can lend you some cash. I don't need the money, Jimmy. He just wants I this. To... That's why it's cruel. Yeah, because like for Jimmy, it was a willing thing. I mean, it wasn't really like, you know, he got caught. He was going to go away. Chuck was saving him. But for Marco, it was very much not willingly that he wanted to let go of this. I think maybe there was a, maybe may, maybe there's even a level of addiction, right? And, and I think that would be even crueler from, I mean, I'm speculating, I suppose, but I don't know, maybe I could see that. And that would be crueler from that point of view as well, because like Jimmy made him relapse. And we're seeing that here. He's like, no, no, I, I, it's not about the money. It's about the, the act of doing it, the, the thrill that, you know what I mean? That's why I'm kind of talking about addiction a little bit, because I'm like, the way he's talking, saying, it seems more like that. It's not necessity, it's desire. I gotta tell you, standpipes ain't cutting it for me, man. Right. I got nothing, Jimmy. Give me this. Oh, man. Okay. Oh, I just feel like this is gonna go south, man. <coughs> that cough again. Oh, is he just gonna bite it? He's gonna actually be dead, isn't he? They're gonna come on him and he's gonna just be dead. Oh, man, and that's the last person Jimmy's got. Ah, uh, Kim, I suppose, right? But I, I swear, I, I feel like he's gone, man. Please, mate, please. Come on. Yeah, oh God. Yeah, oh, come on. Come on, do we need this? Do you know what I mean? Do we Do we need more pain? You with us? Great, great, thank you. I say we move on. Oh my God, this isn't what Jimmy needed. This is when I found him. Hey. Oh God. No, you did, you did. Oh God, okay, good, thank you. Oh, Jimmy couldn't have taken that man, not after, not the double whammy, man. This was the greatest week of my life. Oh, he's, he's dying, isn't he? <laughs> That's why he wanted to do it so bad. Maybe not addiction. I think he... Oh God, no. Oh, come on. Come, oh, don't do me like that. Are you serious? I thought we were out of the, out of the woods, man. Marco! Polo! Polo, please. Help! Well, this is the worst, man. Marco! Polo. Oh. 
Oh, he can't take the double whammy. Come on. Well, now I'm seeing the whole thing of like, well, he's going to keep Marco's spirit alive by, you know, retaining some of his past and slipping Jimmy. Do you know what I mean? I just see there's, there's more fodder for him going down this double path of like being a lawyer, but using all of his skill set, right? You know, using his law expertise and slipping Jimmy. Is that his? His mom gave it to me. Could be worth a couple of bucks. Oh, no. He's going to keep that, man. Does he have that on, on in Breaking Bad? Hey. This Ferris Bueller? Mm -mm. Just checking in. What are you up to? You know, burning down the place. Oh, come on. Please be honest with Kim, man. You need help. Whatever it was, did you get it out of your system? Oh, we got it out all right. The Sandpiper case? It's getting too big for HHM. Are you Howard's serious? partner with another firm. You, wow, okay. Davis and Maine, you heard of them? Sure, up in Santa Fe. Well, <sighs> no. they've heard well, of you too. Yeah? Are they going to take you? they're interested. They want to make you an offer. Bang. Smash it. They've got a partner track position in mind. Wait. Mate, Jimmy. Partner track, what are you talking about? Oh, I hate stuff like this because I'm like, I know he doesn't end up there and I'm like, how's it gonna go wrong? How's it gonna go wrong? I hate this show. <laughs> I'm talking about there's an office in Santa Fe with your name on it. Amazing though. And you'd be working on your case. Right. Well, I... There's gonna be a certain part of him that's like, no, I don't want anything to do with that. It reminds me of all of my trauma with Chuck, but I, I want him to take, please. Chuck wouldn't like it. Chuck has no say in this. Right? You wouldn't be working for HHM. And exactly. Did Howard, did Howard talk him up? We've been talking to your clients, the Sandpiper residents, and they ask about you every chance they get. Mm. Sounds good? Please. <laughs> Please. Kim, I can't imagine what you did to make this happen. Amazing. And believe it or not, Howard's been pushing this too. Of course he has. Yes, he has. The Davis and Maine people will be there. It'd be the perfect chance for you to meet them. Thursday at 11. Cool, man. I'll see you then. What a low slash high point to end season one on. What a mixed bag. Again, though, opportunity, this crossroad. See, I've written right here in the box. Copy and file us to make it as clear as possible. Wow. Condescending much, dude. Almost everything was right this time. Condescending. Um, it's a small thing, but to my taste, the uh, Granny Smith apples are a bit too tart. Those are the green ones, right? Right. Oh, his whole attitude, man. It's not a major issue, but... Uh-huh, uh-huh. Do you need to write any of this down? Because it's okay if you do, to be sure. God, I hate Chuck, man. I do, I really don't like him at all. I wonder as well if he's going to get better and he's still going to use someone to help him. I feel like a man like him at this point is like, yeah, no, I should be helped. I shouldn't have to lower myself to go do my own groceries. Do you know what I mean? I feel like it might get to that point and he's just going to use people to do like these menial tasks anyway, regardless of whether he gets better or not. Oh. Oh, oh, hello. How's he doing? Seems okay. Oh, and despite everything, he's still, he's still like, how's Chuck doing? See you, Jimmy. Oh, see you around, Ernie. He would have done so well at HHM. He'd have been one of the guys, and he'd also have been a hotshot lawyer. Yeah, Chuck. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. How much do you want to go and see him, dude? How much do you actually truly care? This is the thing, there is a note beneath everything that they do care about each other, obviously, that Chuck cares about Jimmy. I acknowledge that, I know that's there, but to a certain extent that doesn't matter with all of the other stuff. Davis and me and Miguel. How is this going to go wrong? He's either not going to get the gig or he's going to get the gig and it's going to just backfire somehow, I don't know. Yeah, of course he keeps it, bless him. Mm. Hey, at least, at least he- hello? I was gonna say, at least you got that week with Marco, right? Did I dream it? Or did I have $1,600,000 on my desk in cash? Oh? No one on God's green earth knew we had it. We could have split it 50-50. Why didn't we? What stopped us? Mm. Remember you saying something about Models? doing the right thing. Right? Doesn't matter as much anymore. I don't even know what that means. Right. Me personally, I was hired to do a job. Yeah. I did it. And this is the question now. Now, because we're on this crossroad. I'll talk about it in a second. I know what stopped me. You know what? It's Didn't never stopping me again. There you go. I told you. This crossroad. Yeah, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it in a second. It's Sir Jimmy Unleashed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Finally allowing himself to be himself. There we go. Yeah, first first step towards Saul. So that's the thing. That's what I want to talk about a little bit is this, uh, this opens the door. And I've been kind of talking about it, you know, beating around the bush a little bit, I suppose, all episode. But this crossroad that he's on and how he's going to usher in Slipping Jimmy. The only thing keeping Slipping Jimmy back and using all of his skill set 
as a person that he has at his fingertips, all of his expertise, all of his knowledge, all of his cleverness, all of his wiliness, right? The only thing holding him, holding him back from that was Chuck. And it's that question, and, I, and that question at the end to Mike really, really just, you know, sends that home and shows where he's on internally, mentally, of like, why didn't we take that? We could have taken that. Only thing holding me back was Chuck, right? It was very interesting how he talked about how Mike was like, oh, because you were talking about doing the right thing, and Jimmy was like, I don't know what that is anymore. And yeah, it's true, right? And so that feeds really nicely into this law question that I mentioned previously, what I wanted to talk about of uh, last episode, Chuck talking about, uh, you know, upholding the law and his, this precious kind of viewpoint that he's got towards it of like, it's precious. You can't abuse that. And it's like, Mm, isn't the law abused every single day? Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like it is to a certain extent. And I feel like lawyers are the, the main perpetrators of that, right? To a certain extent. And, and that's, that's their job. They're supposed to. Because regardless of whether their client is guilty or not, their job is to get them off. Right? Behave. Stop it. No, no, no. Stop. Not like that. Only if they want to. Okay, with consent. But that's my point is I feel like to a certain extent he's, he's upholding a thing that can be abused if you're clever enough. And it's like, who are you, Chuck, to say where the morals lie, especially considering what you've been doing? All right, Baba. And I'm not being funny. What I've seen this entire season, at least from a moral standpoint, is that I think Jimmy probably is more on a track of that than Chuck has been. Uh, maybe not necessarily in regard to the law, I suppose, but as a person, I think everything we've seen of Chuck is as the antagonist, is as the bad guy. I think he has made some very questionable moral decisions. I think what uh, Mike was talking about last episode is very prevalent here when we're talking about this, because he was talking about, yeah, whether you're on one side of the law or the other doesn't necessarily determine whether you're a good person or a bad person. Person. I think that's what we're seeing. I think that was very on purpose because that's what we're seeing from Jimmy this season. All the times that he's broken the law, done something a little bit questionable. He's then, you know, turned it around and showed actually he's a good person. You know, I'm thinking about like, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, the twins and blah, blah, blah. He was, you know, looking to get ahead. It was for personal gain and et cetera, et cetera. I think I've talked about that enough, right? Because like, I do honestly think he was only ever in that situation because of Chuck doing what he did anyway. I've talked about that in this video already. I'm not gonna to touch that anymore. However, what I would like to kind of address is that, yeah, that happened. What came from that that I think is very important to address in this situation is that when they were in the desert and he was looking to save their lives, he was so insistent on that. And I think a, a, a level of evidence that Chuck used against him was this medical bill about the broken legs and paying for that. It was evidence for Chuck of the Slipping Jimmy days, whereas we as the audience know that actually he didn't have to do that. One, he didn't have to save him. Two, he didn't have to pay their bills, right? That was Jimmy being a good person in every aspect in regard to the fallout from that situation, right? Then we go to the Kettleman's and the uh, 1.6 million and the way that, yeah, he took the bribe, but also in the end, he gave all the money back. He got them back to HHM. The way that that actually resolved was from Jimmy's perspective, left his hands clean and one of them went to prison. Repeatedly, we've seen Jimmy care for people, show that he, he will go the extra mile. I think the Sandpiper case demonstrates that as well, right? You know, he really had his eye out for these elder people. And that was on his own merits. There was nothing shady about that. He just paid attention, listened to them, asked them questions, and he got that himself. And so I think, you know, when we're talking, uh, you know, who's gonna morally use the law, now that we're in this position that we're in now, and Jimmy is unfettered, right? He's like, I can do whatever I want. I personally, at least at this point, put Jimmy in a place where he can look at things more, more so morally in some cases, I feel like, than Chuck can. So sorry, it's a very long way of essentially saying, I think this way that Chuck is upholding the law in the way that he's doing, I think is largely arbitrary and a little bit laughable in the way that he's being so stringent in regard to it, honestly. Considering, I think, you know, it's a little bit naive to assume that every lawyer has the best interests at heart of the law. So I think there's a little bit of ambiguity there in regards to that question of the law. I think that argument from Chuck is very weak personally. And considering the moral balances and the moral standpoints of both Jimmy and Chuck, like I've talked about just now, a Jimmy unfettered by this thing that he's taken from Chuck and being on the straight and narrow and having to play by the rules, essentially. Jimmy's in such a powerful position coming out of this season because those fetters are gone, like I keep mentioning. He's willing and able at this point to use all of his skill set. Is it going to get him in trouble? Maybe. I think at a base level, this puts him in a very, very interesting position. I think at the end of the day, like I said, this crossroad that he's on, I 
think he's very much on that path of awe, right? He's very much on that path of now I can bring Slipping Jimmy back into myself and actually embrace myself in more of a fuller way to get the job done. And if I determine my client to be innocent, if they are innocent and I can see that, I can play by the rules that I know of as a professional lawyer to get this person off and free in a way that Chuck might not have. I did also see, sorry, I saw, I also saw a comment last episode uh, on my video uh, that implied at least that Chuck only really takes cases if he knows he can win them. Again, hey, pesky, stop it. No spoilers, okay, okay. It's a light spoiler, it's a very light spoiler. I don't know how accurate that is, but I, I do also have that playing in the back of my mind a little bit and I think lends a little bit of credence to what I'm talking about in regard to how moral these two guys are. Because it's like, he talks so much about, you know, the law upholding the law and it's like, how much does he abide by that? I'm not going to comment too much on that because like I said, it's from a, it's from a comment from last episode. I haven't seen it myself, so I'm not going to talk about that really until I see it, but mm, interesting. And I think, you know, causing to question this, this such strong motivation that Chuck has in talking about the law as this pure, clean thing, which I don't think it necessarily is. And it doesn't necessarily always benefit the person who needs it. Anyway, 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 I've digressed a lot. I've talked a lot. I've waxed a lot. I've just rambled, honestly, a lot in this outro. So uh, apologies. Hey, what do I think of the season? Good season. Great foundational season. I love what it's ended on. The note that it's ended on and him coming more into his, his own. I think we've seen him struggle with it uh, a lot this season. Again, you know, putting a lot of that down to Chuck, I think is a lot of the instigator in that. But regardless of that, we've seen him, you know, Jimmy, very back and forth on who he is, this, this, this issue of identity. And I think going forward, we're going to see him come into his own a little bit more. I'm very excited to see that. I think he's much, this is much more, coming out of the season is a much more powerful Jimmy in regard to where he's at personally and professionally. I think it's going to give him a much larger sense of self. I think the symbology of the ring that he's taking from Marco there as well in reminding him of that and who he is, is maybe helping him solidify who he feels he is as well and answers that question of identity that we've been grappling with this entire season. I think that's been a big, a big theme, a little bit of, I think probably the main focus to a certain extent of this season is Jimmy's identity. And I think going forward, we're going to see a little bit more clarity on that and a little bit more decisiveness from Jimmy on that as well because of what we've seen this season and especially uh, this episode and obviously the fallout from last episode with Chuck as well. So yeah, very excited. Very excited to usher us into season two. Um, we will be doing that next week. So uh, hey, if you've enjoyed this and you're not subscribed already, hey, hit that subscribe, hit that bell button. You'll be notified every single week. We do uh, Better Call Saul Sunday and uh, any uh, content in between as well. Thank you as always to my beautiful patrons. Any content you see on YouTube will be on Patreon early and there'll be extra bits and bobs over there as well. Uh, so if you're interested in that, link down below and uh, have a little bit of a look. Look, uh, other than that, thank you for watching. If you've watched this Better Call Saul series so far, thank you. Very much appreciated. Hope you've enjoyed and we will be continuing with it for a very long time yet. So uh, yeah, with that said, thank you once more and I'll see you soon.